Hey, welcome to Public Land Meat Company. I'm Josh Solholt, and today we are gonna be making some cheddar German bratwurst. To do that, we're gonna be using the grinder, we're gonna be using the mixer, a sausage stuffer, and a vacuum sealer to create this. So first step in this process is we're just gonna get the grinder going. We did uh, complete kind of the quarter breakdown, and it's a front and a rear quarter that is what we have carved out here, and just get the grinder fired up and turn it into smaller pieces. All right, so now that we got the burger portion ground, we'll grind up the, uh, the pork fat. One thing kind of discovered from a, from a friend through the years is using bacon ends as your mixture is a really good way to do it. We're doing a mix of about, I do about between 25% and one third fat. A lot of people do a higher fat content in their sausage. I just prefer to keep it a little bit leaner, usually the 50-50 mix that you see in a lot of sausages. So we're gonna go down with 20 pounds of meat 10 pounds of pork fat. I'm gonna get this ground up and mixed up and turn it into a broth. So next in this order, just throw all the meat and all the fat into the mixer and I get that going, and I kind of get a pretty good mix of that, you know, so it's relatively evened out. After that, I add my seasonings and water, and then finally, for the kind of the last portion of the mix, I add the cheese and get that evened out. So that's the order in which I do it. I just, I try to agitate the cheese as little as possible. I don't want to get it all mashed up or anything like that. I want those nice chunks of good cheese, that high temperature cheese in the sausage. And that's pretty important. If you're planning on making sausage at home, uh, order some high temperature cheese. That will be the only thing that'll hold up against, you know, up against the grill when you're cooking it or, or however you're cooking it. Then you end up with those nice chunks of cheese within the meat. If you just chop up a block of cheddar or whatever other cheese, essentially all the cheese just melts and uh, you end up with just more of a, a normal tasting brat. The cheese doesn't really come out in the flavor. So definitely focus on the high temperature cheese when you're making sausage at home. And then the fat. Always a little trick here to keep clean. And it's in. That makes it up. All right, that's pretty good. Up next, I'll get my seasonings mixed up, get those dumped in. All right, so the following step is, I've just got 15 pounds of meat in the 20 pound mixer here. Uh, find going just a little under the max capacity gives it a nice mix. So I just split our allotment of meat in two, got the fat mixed into it in half, split my seasonings in half, and best way to go about getting a seasoning, especially initially, is just uh, do a little research and buy a prepackaged German sausage seasoning. There's a bunch of them out there, a bunch of companies make them. Find one you like, you may have to experiment with a couple different companies, that's part of the fun though. So yeah, I'm gonna get the water and seasoning, half the water, half the seasoning mix in at this point, and uh, we'll keep trucking. So sprinkle that over the top, sort of evenly. And then kind of trickle the water over just to kind of get it on as much of that seasoning as I can, so it gets a good mix into the meat. And we'll just give it some turns. We're almost to where I kind of like to have it be done mixing. So at this point, I'm gonna add the high temperature cheese and get that worked into this batch as well. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and dump a pound of cheese into this. It's uh, each package is going to have sort of a instructed amount of cheese per pound of meat. So just follow the directions on the back. This one ends up being about one pound per 10 pounds. I have 15 pounds in here, but with the pork fat, but that's all right. I'm just gonna use, use two packs for this 30 pounds.
Get this nice and evened out. Look at those delicious cheddar bites. Cool, so we got all the cheese mixed in, all the seasoning mixed in, everything's looking good. And kind of what I like to do next, uh, before I process the entire lot of 30 pounds of meat into the casings, I like to just make a couple of patties of the sausage I made, just throw it in a fry pan, get it cooked up, taste it, and see if I like it. You know, really at this point, it's kind of your last chance to make adjustments. And so if you like the sausage you're gonna make, you're gonna like it in the skillet. If you don't, you know, add meat, add more seasoning. You can kind of play with it a little bit to get what you want. So we'll do that now. All right, so we just let this cool for a little bit here just to get the taste and yep, that's gonna work. Onward, we'll get it in the stuffer and get it, get it put in the casings. All right, so we're ready to get this sausage into the casings and uh, hog casings, I like to use the natural hog casings. You can also use synthetic casings. With natural casings, they always come in a very salted package and what you wanna do is just set them into some water and uh, sort of work them around a little bit and it's just kind of to get them all very malleable and kind of get that salt sort of worked off uh, all of the sides. So you don't have to soak them for a long time, just a couple minutes before you get going, just to get them so they'll stretch around the nozzle so you can get them loaded. All right, so I soaked these down uh, in cool water just to get the salt off, re-set them into some warmer, cleaner water, and uh, now they're ready to get put onto the nozzle. And this part, you just kind of have to find the opening and put a little bit of water onto that nozzle. And then you just start to work that casing on around the nozzle. And it takes a little bit of time just to get proficient at finding the opening initially. And you just kind of work the casing around the nozzle, keeping the opening in the kind of the center of that hole so it evenly splits the casing around the nozzle as you're putting it on and then you just kind of work it up to that nozzle as you go further down the casing. And you just start to fill those casings up. to kind of the sizing you're looking for. Just give them a little twist and that creates that nice separate brat. And in between each brat you want to kind of do about a half a turn back crank just uh, just so you don't end up with a bunch of pressure when you're trying to twist them into individual sausages. All right, so we got 30 pounds of German cheddar sausage stuffed into the brats. And now, how we've chosen to do these today, and what I normally do, so at this point, you can go a couple different ways. One is, you can just package them up and freeze them and cook them later. This step, we can be totally done right here. Uh, however, usually what I like to do is, I either like to cook them for an hour or so, either in my smoker, or today we're gonna be using the pellet grill. So, we're just gonna do a low heat, you know, 185, 200, something like that. We're just gonna smoke them for about an hour in that grill and just let them kinda absorb some of that smoke, get almost cooked through, but not quite. And then we're gonna pull them and freeze them. So I've just, through time, I've kinda found that adding that little smoke step, and by all means, if you wanna cook them to done and then freeze them, that's fine. But I kinda find that that balance between adding a little bit of a smoke ring to the outside and then going through the full cook the day you want to eat them kind of ends up being the best product. So that's how I do it. Part of the beauty of making your own sausage is you can come up with your own little tricks and, and ways of doing it that are original to you 
and therefore the taste is original to you as well. So anyhow, let's get them on the grill. So we just got the brats off the pellet grill and uh, kind of pre-smoked up and ready to go. So now it's just a matter of putting them into the vacuum sealer, getting them sealed up and throwing them in the freezer. And voila, perfect every time.